We are live. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Insecurity. We are at episode 25. And again, we have Tom here, who's finally back, and hopefully he's good. But let's ask him, how was your Windows XP end-of-life day? Well, sat there watching the sunset go over the hill of bliss and enjoyed a nice sweet tea, some soft music in the background. It's really a, a sweet, endearing thing. Uh, X XP has been, you know, the most popular operating system ever, ever, with a huge, huge life. And it's seeing end of life. I mean, it's it's done. XP is over. If you are running XP, you have to get off, or you're going to get all kinds of viruses and nasty stuff. Uh, it's just, you know, too expensive to keep running. And honestly, 7's really all that much better. You should really give it a shot. It's not like Vista. It's You won't have the badness of Windows 8. Windows 7 is really where it's at currently. So if you're still running XP, Here's go ahead and jump to 7. 14 years. 14 years. Think about that. In this age of the internet, 14 years it was in service. And it it was rock solid. But with all things, it has to move on. And guys, you got to move on. Like we said, Windows 7. Think of a... What was the name of that girl who did the happy commercials back in the day when they were pushing Windows 7? Oh, man, I forget. I know what you're talking about, but I forget her name. But those were the cutest commercials. And just for the cute factor, if I mean, if that's the only thing that you need, the cute factor, to move to 7, look, I would do it. Take your computer. I ne don't usually recommend going to Best Buy, but they'll give you 100 bucks towards a new one. Uh, I think Microsoft is running some deals to get you in. Uh, you can buy a full license for $100 from Newegg or any of the fries, any of the computer, the computer resell manufacturers. You know what? It's time to move on. You'll like Windows 7. So, Yeah, it's, I mean, 14 years is huge. What were you doing 14 years ago? I don't even know. I mean, that's half my life ago. I know. That's, that's, that's a really long time ago. My students, my freshmen and sophomores, have never been a time without XP. Yeah. It's been that, bar mitzvah. That's so, crazy to think about. I mean, it survived so many different cycles. 14 years. So, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Update. You'll be happy. If you choose not to update, boy, you really have to be careful. Yeah. You really, really have to be careful. And honestly, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah. It's the compatibility issues between XP, or the vast majority of programs that you can run on XP can be run perfectly fine in Windows 7. I, I mean, there's really no great reason to keep it anymore. And if you're still trying to hold out, to be honest, Windows 8 is not that bad. Windows 7 is rock solid. But you know what? Windows 8 has been made to be efficient. It can be. It can run on really low-end stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if, if your hardware can run Windows 8. And you know what? Maybe just look... Look, it's time to get a new computer. If you have a newer computer, $100 is not the end of the world. Always buy your operating system because that's where you get the security updates. That's the foundation of everything. But I think you'll be happy. Yeah. Or or Tom's favorite suggestion, move to Linux. Yeah, you can always move to Linux. It's no better time. Any any particular flavor of Linux that we should move to? You know, i I got to say, I'm on Debian, but if you are just starting out, if you're just like, what's a Linux? Um, you should probably go, I want to, let me, let me check this domain. I want to say linuxmint.com. And that'll give you a download page. You can get a CD to put in your computer and just try it out. You don't even have to install it. And it's really the easiest way to get started with anything Linux. Yeah, you never know. You may like it. Yeah. Yeah, I switched ages and ages ago. And I'm I'm running my Mac only because I like the Mac, not because I hate Windows or anything like that, but when I bought it at the time, that's where I was. But 
There's nothing. There's my server downstairs is running uh, free NAS, which is BSD, and who knows? You may put it on. You may like it. Yeah, it's good to good to know your options. So, well, we were going to talk 30 minutes about Windows XP tonight, but something broke yesterday that that is taking the security world by storm. More imp- more bad, I guess that's the right word, than the iOS 7 S- uh, bug from a few weeks ago. And I'm going to let Tom explain it because I'm just catching up on it now. Yeah, this stuff, this is... We've heard of breaches before. We heard of leaks. We hear of bugs. We hear, a, you know, really bad stuff that can happen in security when you're not careful, when you're not perfectly up to snuff in writing the software. And here's a case where it is possibly the biggest security breach ever, hands down, ever in the history of the Internet. The issue is Like this. ever, ever? Um, I'm, I'm thinking like in the history of the Internet. I'm, I'm trying to think of something bigger than this. I mean, Fire Sheep was pretty eye-opening, but I wouldn't say it was, you know, the biggest breach ever. This, this on the other hand, it's remote, and it's very, very easy to exploit. So what is this horrible thing that we have to worry about? So you know how we always tell you, if you're putting login information to a website, make sure it says HTTPS. Make sure it's got the secure bit right on the end. It has the green lock. Yeah, it's got the green lock up in the corner. This bug, essentially, for the majority of servers on the Internet, um, it allows that to be completely bypassed. So, so this is going to take some explaining. How, how do websites make themselves secure? Well, they've got the server operator. So if you're running a server, you need to make a certificate. You need to get someone higher up, VeriSign, um, there's a couple different SSL providers. I know GoDaddy has one. Um, cheap SSL does them. You, you need a certificate to sort of say, to, to rubber stamp your way into the security world, to say, hey, everyone, I am now secure. Um, what you do is you create a secret key that only you know, and this secret key is used to generate everything off of that. So you create what's called a certificate request, and it doesn't have your secret key in it. It's just made with, uh, it's just signed by your secret key, if that makes any sense. Um, you then hand this certificate request to an issuer, to a, a big internet company that does this all the time. They say, oh, yeah, okay, this looks good. And depending on the cert you want, they'll verify your information. They'll give you a phone call. Some of the more important ones, people will actually come out to your business and take down a lot of information, go through a long legal process with lawyers to make sure you are who you say you are. For the most basic ones, they're certified with an email address and a short conversation between people. Um, And they hand you a certificate. What this bug allows people to do is use a specially targeted attack at a web server that's serving a secure website, and the server will actually leak the keys. They will leak your secret key out to the attacker. Meaning, that attacker can now sit and sniff any traffic, any encrypted traffic going back and forth on that web server and read all of it. It's no longer encrypted. They have the keys you're using. If you're not using perfect forward secrecy, this goes from being, you know, uh, uh, kind of a big deal to a major deal. This means usernames, passwords, documents, pictures, whatever you're sending that you think is secure is now not. That bad guy can read all of it. This is well, a huge problem. Well, I was going to ask, it sounded like that they can get certain packets at a time. Could I, they can't, can they automate it to just have a constant flow? I thought they had to like say capture packet and it sent just a small packet, but can you say just uh, line them up? I want a packet every second, every half second, whatever it is. Well, what in the bug is called Heartblade. What Heartblade actually does is it doesn't return a packet. It actually returns a uh, a block of memory, a small portion 
of what's in the computer's memory at that time, including the secret key that you're using for your secure connection. Now, this memory could also contain usernames and passwords, or documents, or pieces of documents, or session information, or your Minecraft server you're running in addition to your web server. Uh, there's You can get a whole lot of information by just getting memory dumps, but yeah, you could essentially fire away at a server to try to get pieces of memory and piece them together. And, and basically, so they can send the packet and they, they can't get everyone's username, but they can get, uh, if they fire at that right time, they can get one person's username. Or, here, here's another thing. Let's say you're at the airport. Let's say you're using open Wi-Fi. And let's say the server you're connecting to, your bank, they have a vulnerable server. They are vulnerable to Heartblade. You could have a guy, an evil hacker in the airport, use the Heartbleed attack against that bank server, get their secret keys, and then sniff all your traffic. See all of your bank data, get all of your bank usernames and passwords. If there's anyone doing any sort of like Wireshark or uh, kind of looking at the traffic in route, especially on public Wi-Fi, this is huge. This, this means it's completely compromised. Nothing is safe. Now, the good news is there's already a fix out. This isn't the end of the world. And Perfect Forward Secrecy does a whole lot at keeping things safe. But there are some attacks based on that being implemented as, as well. So while this is a huge deal, um, I can see this being fixed fairly soon. The thing you have to watch out for is older servers or people who aren't paying attention to, uh, to the you know, security tech world or sites that just don't update very much, that you use all the time, that you think are secure. Um, you know, all the big ones have been fixed. Google, Yahoo, um, LastPass, SpiderOak, they've all been fixed. Um, but you've, you've got to be careful. You've really got to think about what you're logging into. Now, what does this mean if the server was compromised at one time? It means your password may or may not have been exposed, and you have to change that. Well, and and right before the show started, we tried to get Amber back on. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it. But LastPass has done something really cool. On their blog, which we'll post in the show notes, they, they said if you run the security check, they will check these websites for you automatically to make sure it either is affected or is not affected. I just ran it, and they checked all the websites, and I have a handful Fitbit, Get Pocket, GitHub, Gravatar, IFTTT, My Fitness Pal, Netflix, Strava, Tumblr, Woot, Yahoo. I mean, that's about 10 sites, which is not bad considering I have a lot of websites. But the good part is now they're telling me, so if I run this every day and we find more sites, I can go change the websites. The goal is you're hoping that these companies, like right now Netflix says that they have not fixed it yet, so I have to wait to change that password. Yeah, and it's, I mean, so for, for a, a site like Netflix, you know, oh no, they've got my username and password, they might watch all of my movies, and they might add a bunch of stuff to my to-watch list. Yeah, it's not such a big deal. It's annoying because someone's using your account, but it's not such a big deal. But something like, you know, banking websites, um, Google, I mean, Google was huge. Luckily, they got the fix out the door before this became a big story. But uh, it's this is big. This is massive. And, well, so let so take Google. They got the fix out the door. Does that mean? Does that mean we're not? Google is not safe. It's just that before it was public, nobody, nobody in the public could sniff that. Right. So anybody, so once this went, so again, once this went uh, public, now you, now the hackers are making, uh, are are creating these these uh, exploits to go after these websites, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what this means is the bug has been around for, I, I need to look at this. I think it was two just years. Sure. Just I think sure. it was two years. Yeah, I I remember hearing two years. Um. 
I mean, this, yeah, it was 14th, yeah, 14th of March, 2012. And this has been around for a very long time. And just because we haven't heard of it until yesterday doesn't mean it's not being exploited. There could be people out there writing exploits and selling them on the black market as a zero day. Um, things could have been compromised for the past two years, and we wouldn't have known. Uh, I just discovered before we started filming, one of my web servers uh, was vulnerable. Uh, I thought I was running a different version, just checked it before the show. Turns out I need to upgrade some stuff, so I, uh, I shut off those problematic sites. Well, let's ask this. What is OpenSSL? So the exploit came in OpenSSL. Is that the the underlying foundation of all SSL certificates, or just the one that the most people use? It's it's one of the big ones. Um, I would say, I would put it in the majority, but I don't really have any statistics to back that up, other than just a general gut feeling. Um, OpenSSL is an open source library for managing um, SSL certificates, connections, generating keys, generating all kinds of certificates and all kinds of encryption stuff. And that's what this bug was in. It was in one of the very core pieces of architecture to most SSL systems. And it's a big problem. It's a huge, huge problem because this is in just about everything. If your router uses SSL, chances are it's going to be using a version of OpenSSL. If, I mean, your phone is probably running a version of OpenSSL. There's, there's a whole lot of things that rely on this core piece of technology that we just found out is compromised, has this major flaw. And, and, and it's, it's only going to get worse because it's fixed. Well, yeah, it, it is fixed, but the problem is, is that, is that it's it, from when it was when it was publicized to when it got fixed to when the servers fix it and the websites fix it. Yeah. There's going to be a couple of days there, and and in a couple uh, of days we're all, we're going to forget about this. If you don't do it now, you're going to forget about it. So you got to set your reminders, and you got to and you got to remind your mother and your father and your grandparents when it gets fixed. And the good part is the big sites are already fixed, but you have these you have these little sites that are still working on it. Yeah, the the best thing website operators can do, honestly, is after they fix this, as annoying as this is, they need to force their users to change their passwords. And it's it's annoying. It's a pain. I get it. I don't like changing my passwords. That's why I have LastPass. You know, I don't like coming up with a bunch of new stuff. Now, LastPass, I just hit the generate button and save, and it's done. I don't have to remember anything. But you know, I, I don't want to be part of that part of that team. I don't want to do that to my users. Luckily for you, on the end, just you sitting in front of a web browser right now, you don't own any web servers. You don't run any websites. The thing you've got to be concerned about is when the site gets updated, and you might not even know if they do, um, unless they publicize it or unless you go out and check through one of these Heartbleed checkers. Uh, change your password. I'd say set yourself a calendar reminder. In one week, go through and change you know, like your top 20 passwords. Or better yet, if you're using LastPass, use your security check. It does all the hard work for you. Like I said, I just ran it, and it found 10 sites... That uh, that I I need to change, and most of them are go update. Or about fifty percent are go update. The other fifty percent are wait because they're still working on it. For example, Tumblr. Tumblr is a wait, and uh, so that means in a week or so I have to check it again, and hopefully by then they'll have it. So it, it it's it's not only is it a bad bug, it's also annoying because you have to wait for the website to fix it, and then you got to go and fix it. And when and you know this when you change your passwords everything breaks, you have to re-enter your uh, your password on your phone again and all this other nonsense. So that's why if you haven't if you haven't gotten your uh, LastPass uh, premium, now this month would be a perfect time to do it because as you change the websites, the mobile apps need to be changed. And remember, LastPass now fills it in for you. So yeah, it's it's really. Uh, LastPass has gone from, you know, a really good tool to a really great tool 
very quickly over the past couple updates. I'm I'm in awe of what they. Oh, we asked pre-show. What about two-factor authentication? Two-factor. Um, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of um, of variables that can go into this. So if you're punching the numbers into the website and it says SSL, and there is the Heartbleed bug present, they'll probably see the numbers you're putting in. Which luckily, in most two-factor authentication, if they see duplicate numbers, they'll just reject one of them. So either somebody's going to be right on the money and able to interrupt your connection or send it faster than you can, or they won't be able to do anything. One of the things to keep in mind, though, is if you're setting up brand new two-factor authentication, that seed file, the, the secret thing that your phone has, the, the QR code, that could have been leaked. As someone else might be running the exact same code you are. So keep that in mind. You might want to regenerate your two-factor authentication. Which is very annoying, but... Just yes. like with anything else, you got to do it. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that this is the next target for exploit. They're, they will absolutely go after this. So yeah. now you got to check. Make sure your friends, if your friends get hacked on Facebook, remind them to change your Facebook password. Don't do what my buddies do. When their Twitter gets hacked, they just create a new Twitter. And that is so bad in so many ways because the account is still active, still sending spam, but they don't agree with that because, hey, they have this new account. Yeah. And what do they care? Now we have another bot sending spam. You have another person on Facebook sending spam. You have another this and another that, and it's just... And that's what the hackers want. They want these bots. They want these things. And all they're doing is trying to make money. This is a money grab. So, yeah. so this, it's a big bug. It's going to take, I mean, for this thing to get fully resolved, at the very least, you know, three to six months. But there could be web services out there that are just running and that no one bothers to update because it doesn't make business sense to update because you were too small to be a target. And, I mean, you know, take it from someone who deals with hacked websites all the time. No one is too small to be a target, ever. And I mean, and the problem is, is that, is that there's still Windows 98 machines running as web servers, sitting in closets, that have not been updated. And, and the problem is, like you said, no one, no one, everyone forgets about it. It works. Why should we have to do it? And, and now this bug now gets propagated through it, and, and now it just exists on the internet, until I guess for the end of time, because no one will ever update it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a lot of badness, a lot of bad news. I, I hate to be a downer, but you know, I don't, I don't have anything great for you. Change your passwords. Use LastPass. And oh, oh, we should mention this because LastPass is a TNO provider. They're a little bit better at handling this sort of thing. Even if someone's watching the connection, they can't necessarily decrypt. The, the packet that gets sent to you because it's decrypted on your computer. Now, if LastPass is trying to check your password, I think what happens is they just give you the packet and see if the, your password can decrypt it. I, I need to read their white paper again. But TNO services are it's something that does encryption before it gets to the Internet. Those are going to be much safer and much more you know, hardened against this style of attack. And, I mean, and that's what we keep on saying. Just because you trust it doesn't mean that these bugs will, will happen. Well, it will be, you will be unaffected by it. You can hope that they're doing everything right. But as you can see, everyone thought they were doing everything right, and a third of the Internet was now affected. So, I have, Tom, I have nothing else to add. I say we end early. I've got nothing. So... Like we said, we were going to talk about XP and what to do after that, but this was so important that we decided let's do it now, and and hopefully by the time you hear this, all the websites will be actually fixed, and you can go in, listen to our advice, fix it, and be done with it. Yeah. 
And please, if you're running XP, go treat yourself. Go get a new machine. I like I like Asus machines, but there's tons to choose from. Go out and find one that's shiny. And use that as a catalyst to say, I'm going to start from scratch, I'm going to back up properly, get everything on, I'm going to turn on whole disk encryption, and I'm going to change my passwords, and use this to be secure. Make this your time to be secure. Yeah. Go treat yourself. So, get a new toy. So, okay, I have nothing else to add. I say we end and call it a day. Sounds good to me. Okay, bye, everybody. See you guys.